Hi everyone, welcome to the LE Publishing webinar on teaching very young learners, in particular teaching them English. And my name is Andy Cowell. My details are there for you. Uh, this is a recording and not a live chat. So uh, if you have any comments or questions or feedback, uh, drop me a line. My email is there. And also the email address for the LE people at international at elleonline.com. So I'm going to be looking at a few things first, which will be our principles really of what it what it involves actually, some of the basic ideas around teaching uh, very young learners. And uh, then we're going to look at just very quickly some resources you can go and look at for your continuing professional development, CPD. And uh, obviously we're going to look at the materials that Ellie Publishing have done to support you in teaching three to five, three to six year olds. So this is for you if you teach the preschoolers. And when we talk about uh, teaching very young learners, I think uh, it's important that we always get to know uh, as much as we can and read about in our training on how children learn and figure out, you know, with experience and with collaborating with other teachers what the kids can and can't do and it's really important that the materials are supported to do that and uh, there are so many different styles and interests of students and they can vary of course in so much in their age and their energy levels and uh, their own topics that they are interested in so many different uh, things to keep in mind and sometimes the classes can be really large and quite challenging and we're teaching not just English we're teaching the whole child we're we're nurturing young little humans so we we know that they come to school in those early years more for another experience really they're not really uh, particularly focused on going to school at yet as yet so it's it's great that they can come in have some fun with you but through uh, the right materials and support for you as teachers you can then uh, take them on a journey which is a new language for them which is not their first language uh, I'll talk to uh, the author Mary Ralston of Smart Start a bit later in this recording and um, one of the things that she says is that yes you should be uh, good at planning your lessons of course but you should also be very flexible you just you have to sort of think on your feet and uh, and do what you can with uh, some of the things that can go wrong but it doesn't have to be perfect but if you stick to the basic ideas uh, you'll be fine and keep the activities varied of course the young learners that we are looking after here they just they they just can lose interest so quickly and of course um they forget easily we know that they uh are like sponges you know they can pick up things quickly but they forget them quickly so we've got to vary the activities and keep repeating the language to them in lots of different varied ways and keep it fun uh this course we're going to look at in smart start there's lots and lots of ways to use their energy and their natural enthusiasm so let's think for a second about what our very young learners are like. I mean, they're, they're curious, of course, they are highly imaginative in their own different ways. They constantly take us by surprise of, um, of what they can be capable of or the things that they say. Um, they're playful. They want to have fun anyway. So you've kind of got a, a ready-made audience of, of, of willing participants to, to your lessons and, uh, they're tactile they want to jump around keep moving and um, we've got to work with that rhythm and all those things that they want to do not sitting still not studying english that comes later although i would wonder why everybody has to sit still learning rules for the rest of their school days i don't think that's absolutely necessary but anyway for now the very little ones they've got to keep moving they've got lots of energy and we have to use that and they're also naturally motivated, hopefully. I mean, they can get tired at times, of course, but uh, I think you get more tired more quickly than they, than they do. So we have to work with their own natural motivation. So how does uh, Smart Start uh, approach these principles and the very young learners that we've got in the classroom? And as I said earlier, it's about um, teaching the little ones how to be you know people and work with other people and be aware of what they're thinking and feeling as best we can obviously they're, they're small but we want to grow their mindset we want to 
teach them um, to feel confident in, in their own abilities and to never give up really and it's okay to make mistakes and so a lot of the, the activities and the uh, tasks that the uh, pupils can do in Smart Start is about you know taking part, being on your own sometimes, working in teams, working in groups, collaborating and, um, and just keep going and uh, make make mistakes and they don't mind at that age uh, making mistakes they 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 haven't we don't correct them all the time we we're just getting them involved and to enjoy English and feel safe you know it's a place where they come to to learn but they can only do it if they have routines and they feel they know what the boundaries are and that they feel it's in a, a safe and positive environment we praise them of course and we kind of empathize with them and teach them empathy skills from a very early age and that we encourage them as much as we can. So uh, take a look at this for a moment from the Smart Start Teachers book. Just read that to yourself for a moment. It's, it's a moving target isn't it? I mean, we, we've got so many different little people and minds and thoughts and topics and moods and energy levels in the class going on at once. And the teacher's book is really strong in this course as uh, preschool material should be to handhold you through those lessons because I found in the past when I've been working with primary teachers uh, who had to become preschool teachers, they often really struggled at the beginning without training or uh, any support or guidance because it's just not the same as teaching primary. It's a very different thing altogether. Some children will learn English more than others and some children will be better at maths as part of individualizing the materials for children. Teaching and learning activities are presented in such a way as to cater for different learning styles and of course personalities. Now we're here to help you, LE Publishing and their training, uh, but uh, look online and you probably have your own favourite resources to go to, all the many different um, methodology and activity books out there in preschool or kindergarten English, uh, CPD is Continual Professional Development, but there are lots of blogs out there, just Google blogs for preschool teaching, kindergarten teaching, and maybe you feel you don't have time sometimes uh, or you're tired but there is a lot out there one of my jobs is to go to conferences and workshops giving talks or watching other people and seeing just how many great ideas are being shared out there there are magazines out there if you just google English language teaching resources or magazines or journals you'll find there's a lot out there for free sometimes you have to pay and that's okay I think some things should be paid for uh, people work very hard to create materials and uh, it's worth keeping an eye on what's out there and if YouTube of course uh, has full of well varying levels of good training but if you know the right names from those blogs and magazines that you read and see them giving talks either at plenaries or workshops in conferences that have been recorded on YouTube or put on YouTube or their own videos too there's a lot out there and I'm happy to be part of that uh, collaboration team in the world to present new ideas or in this case to show ideas from uh, authors who have done this a long time and wanted you to have it in your hands. The British Council uh, also have lots of uh, free materials out there for all ages and levels and experiences of teachers. Uh, there's a magazine they have uh, which is the Voices magazine. Highly recommend that. You can see it online and you can even, I used to get a print version of that. And here are just a few articles available if you can look them up on that website. You can see some guidance and ideas there on teaching very young learners and uh, I used some of those ideas myself. Uh, I also noticed recently there's a course, and I don't know when you're watching this video, but at the moment uh, Future Learn have a course called English in Early Childhood Language Learning and Development, completely free. It's free for a certain period, uh, but then it disappears like a lot of those Future Learn courses. But if you pay a smallish annual membership, you have access to certain courses forever, I think, or at least for a year. I'm not sure, but FutureLearn is another place to go where 
you can see many different kinds of courses on all things and here is one on teaching very young learners English. So here we take a look at uh, Smart Start and it is uh, in three levels for the preschool uh, students and uh, pupils rather and the age ranges are between three and uh, six years old so level one is for the three to four year olds level two to four to five year olds and level three the five to six year olds uh, the components that you have at your disposal are the students book uh, and which has a code and the code uh, you key in on your device uh, you can download the uh, digital book which I'll mention at the end to see the audio and video and uh, see the pages in digital format or even put them onto your interactive whiteboard and there is an activity book um, and uh, additional numbers and reading work which we'll look at and there is a uh, teacher resources too which we'll also take a look at not just a teacher's book but flashcards and puppets and I think there's posters too so we'll take a look at those um, a bit later. The approach uh, in Smart Start is to really remember that as I said they're, they're coming to school as an experience not to learn that they're not really aware of it yet so that's a huge advantage and uh, the whole idea about learning English when you're a little toddler is it's you're experiencing what's going on the songs and the language and the the movement around the classroom that you're that you're coordinating that's all experiencing and they're they're used to learning from experiencing and watching and learning and listening it's not necessarily formal instruction is it so it's got to be lots of fun smart start is a lot of fun with characters we can take a look at and as i said they they'll they'll remember quickly and then they quickly forget so we've got to find lots of meaningful and purposeful ways to get them to use the language in repetitive ways without being bored uh, to really get them to to remember um, what you're teaching them whether it's structures or vocabulary uh, the characters and the stories uh, throughout smart starts three levels uh, looks at their, their world around them, their home, their family life, uh, lots of opportunities to personalize the, the learning, of course, and uh, that's the most important topic, isn't it? Their own life, what's going on around them, very selfish uh, with, their, with their worldview, of course, and that's, that's the way we're programmed. So Smart Start does lots of things for that and then widens that world to the larger world around us so you have real world uh, pages where they can not just explore their own world around them, their family and friends for example and school life but also world, the world of English, the UK, Canada or even countries that uh, English is used as a foreign language uh, when we learn English in Japan or in uh, Egypt I think are in the books. So it's important that they see that the world as they grow a little will grow with them and they can have a wider experience so we use characters for that and those characters are the same age as the pupils and as the levels move from one uh, to three the characters will be the same kind of age with the same kinds of curiosity about what's going on. Izzy, um, our little girl there, she's uh, quite outgoing as a character and then you've got Tom who's quite reserved but Coco their cat is in their adventures and uh, Coco often has you know some challenges or causes mischief to make it fun um, and the objectives in Smart Start for teaching very young learners is, is to make it an enjoyable experience and to harness what they already bring to your classes you know this, this lively energetic playful um, behavior and um, we can use that enormously Smart Start does a lot to play with the visuals for example or the songs and chants in the course but also as I said we're not just teaching English as a subject and that goes on through the many of the talks I like to give with my colleagues in training which is you know not just from an early age but right through school English should really not be seen as a subject and certainly not here it's a skill and in fact for them it's just another way of labeling things that they've seen already like food or toys that they like and also we're learning to teach them how to share, how to manage their feelings and we're looking after them, we're sort of like second parents aren't we? And we're just putting the English into that experience. 
Um, they're learning to read and they're also learning to write. So we've got them to do some coloring in or tracing numbers and letters to, to start to read and then write in a new language because they're even if they're learning at all in their first language, they're just starting to use uh, pencils and pens to write and draw. So the motor skills are vital. And we're teaching them values, you know, uh, how to be a good friend, uh, sharing and things that make us uh, good, good citizens, good people to have around. And smart, smart start in uh, with its objectives, it achieves them by every, every unit starts with sticker scenes. Uh, you, the, the, you, the kids have a chance to peel off the stickers related to the picture dictionary on the left and right of the each opening scene with the characters and start to um, put them in there or stick them on their heads or hands, but that's what they do, isn't it? But ideally, with visual discrimination, putting the right picture next to the words and pictures they see, starting to match meaning with, with the visual. And of course, lots of songs and chants and actions are in the books. Um, and there's experiments too, uh, the, in the, in the uh, CLIL part of the uh, materials, the content and language, school subject and language integrated learning, CLIL, you've got them doing arts and crafts, you've got science, you've got social studies, so again, not just English, but also some of the other subjects that they're going to be learning about as they go into primary school, and we're preparing them for that. So we've got projects, we've got games, and uh, as you saw earlier, we've got characters uh, and comic stories in uh, comic strips as, and also stories. And it's the stories that are in the units that also lead you to have an opportunity to show the values that we can teach them uh, and talk about and, to, and talk about those. Uh, there's a, in level one, uh, there are two uh, real world units, and in levels uh, two and three, there are uh, three real world units. And by that, I mean an opportunity for kids to see the world around them, whether it's their own closer world, their family and friends, or school, or the wider world, the planet itself. And there's a language review always to keep consolidating the language that they're learning with you. So here we are, level one and levels uh, two and three. Uh, all of the books uh, follow the same structure, um, and at the end of the books there are cutouts and stickers, so lots of lots of hands-on stuff for the kids to do. Um, there's an activity book, um, again, you know, lots of writing and drawing practice, uh, coloring in and uh, circling things, of course, uh, more cutting out, and again, linking the values and topics in the student's book with uh, the activity book, which of course is a great way to link their learning with going home with work and letting the parents work with them and show them what they're, what they're doing. The, uh, there are two extra uh, components with the course which are really neat, actually. There's a, a literacy book which uh, extends the skills of, of the, the spelling and reading that goes into the student's book and consolidates the phonics. There's a strong phonics element in uh, Smart Start, um, which has its own uh, particular focus during each, uh, each unit. Um, and the literacy book also has a little bit of reading. And uh, some of the reading in Smart Start is not intended to be full of every you know, translation or, or, or word explained. A lot of the the text and reading work in Smart Start is to uh, expose the students to see the conventions of English text uh, moving from left to right, from top to bottom, and uh, to sort of see more language. But within that, there is focused language and vocabulary work. And of course, as always, students book and the activity book and the uh, literacy book and number book all have audio and uh, that's available in the teachers pack uh, and also in the digital format. The website there is elleonline.com so everything is there. Uh, the numeracy book is um, again an extension of the numbers work. There's a, a unit, every unit has a lesson on uh, counting or it's called Let's Count with lots of extra activities here from the numeracy book and looking at here more at the, the written forms, uh, writing out the numbers and looking at 
number bonds in pairs. So number bonds, you know, if you're looking at number bonds for 10, you've got 2 and 8, or 7 and 3, or 19 and 1 if you're doing number bonds for 20. So it looks a bit more uh, at the number work that you can only do so much of in the student's book. So how does a, a lesson structure look in each of the units? There are eight units in um, lesson, level one and nine units in levels two and three. What, what are the typical lesson structures? Uh, first of all, uh, we open with the vocabulary and then the next uh, lesson uh, looks at a language structure. Then, as I said, we are focusing on the sounds and spelling, phonics uh, of uh, English, and this follows very much the UK system of synthetic phonics, uh, content and language integrated learning. There's a lesson that follows this on, uh, on teaching some of the other subjects they'll encounter at school uh, in English, and we talk about arts, crafts, science and social studies. Uh, and there's always a story, of course. They love stories. We've got to teach th through stories. That's one of the winners, isn't it? And then we've got uh, a chance for them to talk about the story, to think about the words they've learned, maybe retell the story when they're a bit older, join in with you, listen to the audio, point to the pictures. And again, as I say, there are opportunities in all the stories to explore not just the topic to consolidate the language, but also to think about the values that we're teaching them to be good people. Then there's Let's Count, uh, the numbers lesson, and there is uh, a review at the end of every unit to sort of look at the language they've done to practice it and just check any, any weak areas with the students to see what we need to do next. And yes, uh, crucial that around English that they learn from this early age and see examples of the way English is not just something that they're learning for themselves, but it's actually something that goes on in the world around them and the importance of English and to see that it's, it's, a, it's a skill, not just a language that's being used all over the world. And that's, uh, that's very important that they see that from this early age and it should continue right through their school life. Um, I often talk to secondary teachers and so much of their work is about getting them through the exams and of course we take it takes away a lot of the practicalities and fun of what English can be and I, I think it's great if we can maybe move away in the if you talk to your secondary teachers in your in your network to try to keep English fun no matter how old they've become and how many exams are putting pressure on them. So this is a typical uh, opening lesson for the vocabulary and you can see there, um, I've just shrunk the picture down there a little bit, you can see how there's a picture dictionary strip on uh, the left and the right of the page and the students can start to connect the words with the meanings uh, as you teach them and they've got the stickers there to put them onto the page and uh, it's developing the, the motor skills and uh, uh, visual discrimination and uh, a bit of fun, gets them warmed up into the topic and uh, the, the lesson for the vocabulary part, it, there's always a song or a chant you can do with them. Next we go to uh, Let's Learn which is the uh, structure that we're teaching. Uh, here we're doing where is aren't we? Uh, and it's there and it's here, it's on, it's next to uh, and at the bottom there the next part moves to personalizing the language to sort of use it in context. So uh, there we have it. You have um, uh, a few pictures there to take them through the structure that you want to present to them and it's always a bit funny with a bit of mischief. Um, got to keep it fun and keep it lively. The dialogue uh, again you know it's, it's there in speech bubbles and you can play it on the audio but uh, the other thing to say is that some of the words and expressions they might see are not necessarily to be fully understood but it's you know they're not going to question too much I think at this age they're going to just uh, see the language and they know from your, your lead they'll follow your lead follow your guidance on uh, the language they want to learn and, and but there it is in what we would call environmental exposure where they can see lots of English as they go through. Um, that's the great thing about kids is they just just don't question too much at that age. They, they just follow along and who knows what they're picking up. Um, okay, they can, um, they can act out of course. Oh, there's the environmental exposure I mentioned and 
of course, a fantastic opportunity, not just with this, but also in the stories you'll see in a moment, to act out a little bit, do some role play, maybe with you as a, as a group, and then in pairs and groups to, to act out the little dialogues for some focus practice and again to to break up the dynamic and maybe take some control of the class um, with the language and the activities. Personalizing it is always crucial and that is what we do most of the time in all our lessons and um, in this part and in most of the lessons throughout Smart Start the students have lots of opportunities to personalized to take the language you've given them and then think you know what about me what can I do with it what do I like where's where are the things in my classroom this is the, the I think it's this from the level two uh, of students book and the teachers book for um, the classroom language that we did and always there a song or a chant to round it off so plenty of fun and games plenty of stories plenty of songs and chants uh, and here to use the song and chant to get them to practice uh, the structure. Uh, reading um, is the next part uh, in the next lesson of each unit uh, and so you've done the structure now we do some reading to see that at, at work um, and as you can see there's opportunities there for students to start to see uh, the letters, start to write and, and trace the letters in their students book and follow follow the, the letters and link them to the sounds that you can teach them. I'll just move that to the next uh, slide. They're, they're figuring out here, we'll come to phonics in a moment, but here the idea behind the lesson, third lesson in the unit on reading is that they sort of, they, there's a correlation between text and picture uh, and to sort of figure out meaning or follow your presentations with maybe the flashcards that come with the course to show them the vocabulary and, and, and let them connect that with meaning. And as I said, we're teaching them because in some countries it just won't be familiar that the text goes from left to right, top to bottom. And that's why, even though we don't cover every single word or phrase in the books, it still exposes them to the way the language is set out in English. And uh, the chants and illustrations will support them and you an enormous amount. So in the phonics side of it, um, you have in levels one and two, uh, they all... Uh, introduce a grapheme and phoneme correspondence and by that I mean for for example with b for ball they can they can see it's a b that you teach the letter in the alphabet but it's also b but of course they need to understand through the phonics and through spelling that when you see an x it's got a x sound so the connection there and often we're dealing with consonant vowel consonant sounds in the book but it, it covers that in, in levels one and two. And in level three, we're looking more at sound chunks in the form of diagraphs with two sounds together or two letters together. Um, because as they get older, they can do more um, with the segmenting of language, first of all, to identify the sounds in each word and then to blend the sounds together. B, A, L, ball, or or in that case. But, uh, you've got uh, things like... Um, beach, you've got b and e and ch. So in those cases, uh, in all these lessons, you've got the phonics guidance and in the teacher's notes are very uh, thorough to give plenty of uh, ideas and extra activities to develop the sounds and the spelling of English as they work through the reading part. In uh, lesson four in the unit, we then move on to the other subjects. And as I said, it's mostly arts and crafts, science, uh, this physical uh, education and uh, social studies. Um, and that could be talking about emotions or how we feel. And um, we use photographs of real kids, uh, plus activities like cutting and drink. And uh, with the... Uh, Photographs, you've got a connection with real kids, not just cartoons this time, but also lots of tasks and activities to uh, have them cutting or sticking things, drawing, cutting out. Uh, and the, the, the activities and projects are really easy to prepare. And uh, if you look inside the teacher's notes, you can see step-by-step uh, -step instructions for all the lessons, but also to set up the projects and to get them to use the language as they go. Uh, again, we're looking at 
developing their fine motor skills, but also getting them to work together to, to do some speaking, collaborating, communicating with each other for, for projects. It's, um, that's again another important part of English language teaching these days, which is just not to teach English, but make it meaningful, make it purposeful. How does it apply to their own world? And of course, their world around them is also evolving into topics around them at school. So we put those topics into, into the lesson. Here we have something from lesson one, which is the, uh, there's an art lesson here, making a bookmark. That's quite sweet. Uh, there's a science project from level two. Um, there we go. Animals, some of them have four legs, some of them have two legs. And there we have social studies. And there we've got, there we've got emotions here, making facial expressions with uh, paper plates. Uh, and then you've got to I guess use those plates and expressions to see how you would feel with those situations down there. Frightened of a spider, maybe standing on a chair. How do you feel? I'm surprised. I'm scared. Um, okay. And then in lesson five, you have uh, story time, and it's uh, two double page spreads to take the kids through a cartoon story. Uh, these are not usually the characters. In fact, they're not the characters uh, of Izzy, Tom, and Coco, but the characters here will uh, take you through a short story and keep it fun. It, it, it makes the, the, the lesson engaging. Uh, you can play the audio from the CDs or you can download the audio from the Ellie website down there at the bottom uh, or it's in the digital book as well. And again, you know, once they've got the language and they've understood the story a couple of times, they can act it out or mime with you as you play the audio and they can express themselves and, and use their imagination. Uh, it brings all the language together. That's one of the main purposes of the story, apart from also uh, to teach values. But again, it's reinforcing the idea that this is what English looks like. Some of the words will be familiar to them as you teach, but some of them will be just uh, unknown. But we want them to be constantly exposed to the texts of English. And there's a, th therefore a strong literacy element in Smart Start in this sense. Uh, of reading from an early age as best they can and uh, supporting that with the literacy book with uh, further activities and, and extra reading. There you can see the um, there's a story here on uh, she brought in her bird, her little pet bird. Oh sweet, where's the blue bird? It's on the board. It gets out and escapes as birds do in classrooms. <laughs> um, and there it is. A nice little way of getting where is and it's with, with um, prepositions and uh, then they capture it or save it, <laughs> rescue it. Um, and if you want to look at the digital resource, I'm going to play you here the, uh, the one minute version uh, of animation, which is the way the digital book plays the, uh, the story for them. Let's just find that now here. Three little birds. It's show and tell. Ah! Oh no! Where's the blue bird? It's on the board. Where's the green bird? It's next to the door. Shh. The yellow bird is on the table. Oh, where's the yellow bird? Now it's under the bin. Oh, very sweet. There you go. And those uh, those videos are um, are on the teacher resources uh, and on the uh, digital version of the book which is uh, you get a code in the book and then you download uh, if you look at the Ellie online website you can download uh, the digital resources there and I'll show you a slide at the end how to get them from the Apple Store and Google Play and they can also look at that at home on their devices if they want uh, it's quite sweet isn't it that that be a lesson to you don't bring your your pet bird into the classroom and release it <laughs> But we teach other values, actually, in these uh, stories, as I said. And um, here are a quick summary 
uh, or here is a quick summary of the different topics of values to give you an idea of what's in each of the levels. So in level one, uh, if you just take a quick look at those uh, topics for teaching values, this is what we mean. Okay, it's quite uh, interesting how in the last five to ten years, uh, maybe five years, there's been a huge, uh, uh, importantly, there's been a huge drive in English language curricula around the world to teach values. Um, that's level two, but not just in primary school. I think, you know, it's it's now happening across the world and all ages, including and especially secondary, um, has had to be good, positive members of your community. Uh, and global citizenship, you know, uh, intercultural skills and uh, understanding, you know, the value of not just speaking English really well, but communicating in the fullest sense, you know, be, how, how can you be kind in English? Uh, how can you collaborate in English? How can you be helpful? What are the words and phrases? And as they get to through primary and secondary, the course books that you see these days are really excellent and the resources out there on what we call life skills. Values are really like life skills. Um, and that's really an important part of being a, a primary school teacher, a preschool teacher too. You know, we're teaching them more than English uh, and more than the subjects they see at school, aren't we? We're, we're teaching them how to behave. And, uh, you know, like a lot of kids are going to come in and they haven't got good models at their home for some reason. They don't have a sense of good values that we'd all hope they brought in. So if they don't have that, then school is where they're going to have to learn that because that's like another chance to either reinforce what they're getting at home or if they're not getting support at home, with good values then here we are to do it and that's what smart start can also bring them in the topics that we do and also in the stories that are there so there you go enjoying books school is important look at that really important value there um, asking for help being polite so it's, and it's really important part of smart start I really like it for that because it's not just English it's not just stories but it's the rounded nurturing of the child then we go on to the numbers in Let's Count. So developing numeracy skills is, is the next part of the unit um, in this lesson. There we go, counting the furniture and items in the classroom. Uh, and all the Let's Count uh, lessons in the course, uh, they all explore the vocabulary and the topic, bringing the words, the words together and counting and sequencing and looking at patterns uh, in in the different stages of the three levels. Uh, in level one, uh, they, s they see and learn the words pretty much as vocabulary, but they're starting to learn to count, starting to learn to count anyway. But now they can do it in English, looking at quantities as well. Uh, in level two, they move to one to 20. Uh, and uh, now they're looking at sort of positions and places, uh, looking at the, the quantities and counting and maybe doing some simple additional sums, addition sums and uh, counting backwards um, because in level three we can work on that and build on that uh, doing subtraction as well and um, further numeracy skills all preparing them for primary school as well so that's our that's our mission isn't it to give them English but also prepare them for the next stage of their education as they go into the big school or not so big but it gets bigger <laughs> And then at the end of every unit, of course, we can put it all together, see what they've learned, see what we need to do again, revise the language and review it. Uh, and uh, there's a listening task for every single one of them. And uh, it's a chance again, not just to practice the language, but to let them feel that it's something that belongs to them, you know, using the language, you know, where's my stuff? Where's my pencil? Ah, oh, it's in my bag. Where's your, it's in, you know, it's on the floor. So the review gives you a chance to pull it all together. And here's an example from some of the higher levels. There we go, combining there. That's nice. That's combining some of the CLIL topics. They've been doing natural world there in level two. Um, in, um, in level one, uh, there are two real world units and level uh, two and three, there are three. And as I said earlier, it's a chance for the material to open up their world and see look around the world that they're in either at home or get to know other people and things and uh, 
and, and places around the world. And the examples we have in Smart Start are here covering the UK, Australia, India, Japan, Canada, and Egypt. Let's have a quick look there. Um, the resources that go with Smart Start are really, really uh, thorough and creative. You've got some fantastic uh, packs of flashcards and posters which you can put on the wall, use in different uh, different ways. And the teacher's notes, which we'll look at in a moment, are really good at giving you step-by-step -step, uh, lessons to use the puppet or the posters or flashcards to present language or to revise it but lots of new ideas and activities for maybe mixed abilities or mixed energy levels. So I cannot recommend the teacher's book enough. Uh, you'd be lost without it. And even if you're experienced, um, take a look at teacher's books anyway, because there's always something there that you might have missed or you just feel you want a, a change for your own lesson. So there we go. Uh, each, uh, each set of notes will give you a clear idea of the aims of the lesson and uh, it takes you into warm-up activities. You've got s such thorough guidance on all the lessons, extra activity ideas, uh, how to do more with the, the language and the lesson to sort of pull it all together, and how to end the lesson, of course. It's always good to know how to end a good lesson with the little ones, and a resource bank of games and photocopyables, cutouts and things you can put out on, onto handouts or to stick on the wall. Um, I guess you could pause this video and read that, um, but uh, here's an example of some of the warm-up activities. This one's working with senses, I notice, or talking about pictures. Uh, there we are where the teacher's book has reached the part where you've done the story and now we're talking about the value. Uh, this is uh, a character who's got their first day at school, so we're teaching the kids how to be nice to the new kids and understanding differences and their abilities, disabilities, and understanding that we're all different. And um, that's a good example of how the teacher's book brings that out and uh, gives you a chance to talk about it with the kids. Oh yeah, at the back you get these lovely little things you can cut out or photocopy if you've got a photocopier that's in colour. Brilliant. Um, and there are loads and loads of games and ideas. There's a games bank there on how to use the flashcards which come with the book uh, or you can make your own little ones. It's quite nice to make little flashcards actually. Uh, big ones are good for the big activities or for getting them to work and hold them in the classroom but I think it's quite nice to have them as little ones. They've only got little hands so they need to you know maybe like play little card games with the same flashcards you have. Um, I think that's really important. So many, so many classrooms only have the big ones, and that's nice. But they are, let them play with little cards, like little card games that they sometimes play at home anyway. And there are loads of ideas in the teacher's book on how to do that. Uh, the audio scripts are there, of course. Every time there's audio, it will tell you both in the student's book and the teacher's book, and uh, they give you the script there for you to read, rehearse. <laughs> You've got to rehearse your songs, uh, including your mimes, and uh, maybe make them as handouts later when they can read more. Um, I thought I'd, uh, before I go into the final part of this, just play you an interview I did recently with Mary Ralston, who wrote Smart Start, uh, who has extensive experience, many, many years of teaching different, uh, different young ones in the preschool uh, and kindergarten sector. And I asked her, uh, a couple of things really. One was really her main tips for any teachers and what she feels are the two or three main things that we should keep in mind when we're teaching very young learners. And also I asked her what it was she wanted to do in the book that would make uh, your life easier as a preschool teacher. What are the things that she wanted to put into your hands? So let's just see what Mary was telling us there. You ready? Oh. I think the most important thing, and I've learned from this mistake, is you must be prepared. We've yeah. got, we, you can't, with very learn, young learners in preschool, you can't teach off the page um, because you've got so little information, but there's a whole amount of content and thought which has gone into what's on the page, but it's, that thinking is there in the teacher's guide. Yeah. And I, I think we've, 
give we have the teacher's guide and i really suggest the first step is to use it because it's great ideas great it has my intentions in it from what i imagine each little Brilliant. stage of the class to and be. what about a teacher who would you see all the detail in the teacher's book and then they kind of feel overwhelmed maybe by all the things they have, yeah. to, they have to rehearse a little bit yeah i was a bit like that when i was a teacher if the text was very dense i'd be like oh blah blah but if you don't you regret it and i think we kind of nowadays design teachers books so they're a lot more user friendly you can follow each yeah. step there's additional ideas for if something's not going quite to plan you can yeah. just sort of oh okay i'll just get on and do the this activity or we'll break it up but i think preparation and having some tricks up your sleeve because i've observed classes in the past as well where a teacher's gone in with a set of flashcards and that's all she's had and oh. we wanted to prepare material for these yeah. people like this because it was for the two three-year-old classroom and the kids were engaged yeah. for like two minutes and then after that <laughs> they were just running a mock and the teacher's guide has that kind of class management in there doesn't it yes yeah yeah and just extra ideas and a games bank and that sort of thing so there's always some yeah. thing that the teacher can pull out of the hat because my second tip even though it sounds like it goes against be prepared is always to be prepared to change as well yeah and, or to um think on your feet a little bit yeah because you might have an activity that worked really well yesterday and the kids are really getting into it and you're like oh i'll do that one again yeah but by the time you wheel it out a second time it may be engaged for a few minutes but it doesn't have the longevity yeah. that it did the first time around so you need to kind of be prepared to improvise as well as being prepared to know what you're doing yeah, and that comes with experience but i guess you can also look at some backup ideas in the book as well right yeah exactly and just think about all the different things that the children do both in a normal in their setting now one because you can put anything to them with an english slant mm -hmm. so they can do their art and their craft and even their playtime but you can keep the theme in as your english class um but they're doing lots of cross-curricular stuff as well yeah and what's the third tip then uh, well it's the obvious one it's make it fun <laughs> make it fun yeah yeah they they, carried, carried along with their own enthusiasm anyway right yeah and i think they do i mean it's a cliche to say that they're always learn more when they're having fun and they won't even realize what they're learning but if they can start singing songs to themselves and um thinking about stories they've enjoyed mm -hmm. um games they've enjoyed and then they'll remember the language and the vocabulary yeah. that came with it Makes and it i can still easier, sing. Doesn't it, i suppose mm -hmm. i can still sing so i won't but i can still sing <laughs> songs in french that my mum sang to me when i was wow. a toddler yeah she, she was a very fluent french speaker she okay. wasn't she didn't yeah. bring us up bilingually but it's i true. remember nursery rhymes and things we have yeah. it's, it's part of it right they yeah just bolt on the language the new language mm -hmm. yeah i just want to ask you as well on smart start itself um for teachers who are new to it what would you mm -hmm. say what did you want to put into smart start that you felt well either wasn't there out there already or what you really wanted to put into the hands of teachers i want to teachers to feel confident with a real li literacy rich course okay. at whatever level they want to go into that whether it's just to have because a lot of pre-primary courses don't have the text on the pages um so but i don't want teachers to be put off by that because they can take any level they want to the literacy the early literacy that we've um put into the course Mm -hmm. so whether it's just so to build awareness of environmental text to build awareness of the conventions of english texts such as left to right um top to bottom directionality to the alphabet yeah. um or they can go in deeper they can follow the phonics course 
and have the extra literacy book as well and learn how to introduce how the teachers in the UK who follow the national curriculum here yeah. and they introduce synthetic I mean, the liter the liter Sorry to interrupt, the, lit the literacy book is not optional is it really? I mean it should really be integrated into the course like the numbers book? Well I think it is because there's on in the students book itself there is a page, a lesson for phonics and a lesson yeah. for neuropathy and then if you want there's two, the two additional workbooks the literacy and the numeracy um, workbooks which can take it further um, should yeah. the teachers want to with both of those um, just one uh, question is about the values it's it's strong on values that's the other thing that yeah um, that's still part of the story the literacy and the storytelling and we um, and it's easy to get I mean from any sort of storybook there is some kind of an underlying value whether it's explicit and discussed um, such as helping each other taking turns even classroom management things like washing hands and being polite and yeah. things like that um, but you can also get a lot of values into just the representation like a gender balance having females in roles such as firefighter mm -hmm. having um, a good mix of ethnic diversity as well yeah. whether it is just it's just on the page it's or and even there's stories with children who have physical disabilities for example mm -hmm. so all that just the representation of different groups in the stories as well as another a value point that the children can discuss and then yeah. think about yeah, so I learned a lot actually from Mary in that conversation. That's just a clip from what we were talking about. I um, was fascinated in hearing about her background and how many different ways and uh, that she's taught preschool kids and some of the materials that she develops and also how she does some of the stories. She could she found that she couldn't do the stories unless she was out walking her dog, and then the stories would come and then she'd come back and write them. Um, so uh, highly creative, very experienced, and. Um, I'm glad I was able to have Mary contribute to the webinar here because I think it's important that we have the author somehow uh, come and tell us about what was important for them as they hand it over to you to use in your class. So I hope you found that useful. And so as we sort of close now, um, it's really important uh, for many of us now to have digital resources. Um, if you go to the uh, we website there for Ellie, you can see a lot from the whole of their catalogue, print, digital, uh, and um, the, the different kinds of um, extra resources that are there, including audio, uh, answer keys, transcripts. Just go look, go and look for Smart Start on the website there. Um, and um, you can look at the website there, elionline.com digital books. I think it's here. There you go. And uh, you can download uh, the book, put in the code which is included in the book, in the cover, usually the front cover, and uh, have the whole book there to project onto your interactive whiteboard or on the tablet, or the kids can look at it. It animates the stories and uh, brings them to life, and then you've got the audio as well as MP3 files, uh, and more and more things you can do interactively in a digital sense, which is fun and uh, boosts the vocabulary, practices structures, and reinforces the sounds and phonics work that you've done with them. So take a look at the digital resources, look at the website there, that'll tell you more. Um, and there's this really cool app that is called Ellie Link. And what you do is if you go to uh, the App Store uh, or Google Play, if you've got Android, and then you look for uh, the, um, the Ellie Link and you download it onto your phone, and it'll look like this, okay? And um, you then scan uh, the book to find the title you want. In this case, it's Smart Start. Or you can put Smart Start into the search screen and the uh, titles come up. And I'd look for maybe Smart Start 1. And that means now that now that I found my copy of Smart Start 1, which is the print version, on the app, 
then I can start scanning and when I say scanning I can scan for example a page here like hello and I scan with my camera onto the page and then it finds the various media of that page and I can play the unit which is uh, loading here very quickly the audio for that unit and then you can see that you can play there the sound. Unit one. Anyway, unit one, but we're just beginning to close. So the Ellie link is really cool. You can play the audio, you can play videos. That's the story we looked at earlier would be on that Ellie link. Download it for free and then you can scan your copy of the book, the print copy, and see the uh, multimedia versions to play, usually the audio and the video. So that's the end of this uh, webinar on teaching English to very young learners. Thank you very much for coming along and checking us out. Hope it was useful. Hope you can check out the materials. If you have any comments or feedback or queries, drop me a line, andy at eltconnections.com uh, or uh, contact the experts at Ellie Publishing on international at elleonline.com. Drop them a line for your local representative as well. And the main website there, elleonline.com, is where you can go and check out everything you need to know about Smart Start uh, and all the resources and download uh, the main catalog as well. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for joining in. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at the next one.